What's the word, y'all? Listen here, listen here. Before we get into things, it is very late. I just took my hair down. I'm, I got another hair appointment in a few days. So I, I didn't really plan on recording any videos today, or I guess tonight. So excuse the hair. Yo, it's uh, 1034 um, Central Time, and two back-to-back -back trades just happened. I was chilling. I'm grinding my career on 2K, just relaxing for the rest of the night. And then the first trade happens. Robert Covington gets traded to Portland. Um, super excited about that deal, but that wasn't enough for me to hit record on the video. And then literally two minutes later, Drew Holiday got traded to Milwaukee Bucks, and it's done. They have security on us for the next four NBA seasons. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not going that far. I'm not going that far. Be sure to leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you are new. When things break... I pick up this microphone, unless it's tomorrow, because um, tomorrow I'm actually busy, so I won't be able to just rapidly run to this room and record. Drew Holiday, first of all, let's start with the smaller trade. I'm sorry, let's start with the smaller trade. Um, what it signals to me is all these rumors about Harden and Russell Westbrook are true. I know they say that they would be willing to go into next season with Harden and, and Russell Westbrook. They're in no hurry to make any trades. Well, this tells me they were in a hurry to make trades because they got future assets, two first-round picks, and Trevor Reza, who is Trevor Reza, not really going to improve the team too much. You know what I'm saying? So this tells me that they are about to move James Harden and Russell Westbrook probably in the next couple days. So hard reset on Houston. Um, it was fun while it lasted. That's all I can really say. But we'll talk more about Houston once those two trades go through, once they get rid of James Harden, if that's what they do, and once Russell Westbrook is not there. Um, when it comes to Portland, this is kind of a steal. Me and my guys were talking about it on our podcast. Again, I know I plug the podcast a lot, but it's, we actually actively talk about things like this before they actually happen. Um, we, we talked about with the Portland Trailblazers, what the hell would they be doing with that 16th overall pick this year? The last couple drafts, they, they take Anthony Simons, who was a project he didn't go to college i think he was at a img or something he didn't go to college he was a project player same thing with Nas litter he's one of the top recruits but came into college wasn't that great so they picked up two projects for like the future and i don't think there was anybody at 16 that will come in and help them now and of course with damon cj they need people to help them now so they turn that first round pick for this year and another first rounder that we don't know what the protection is on just yet as I'm recording this video. And to Robert Covington, who's one of the best role players in the league, he's going to come in. He's going to be impactful. He's exactly what they need. I mean, the, the time that they made that conference finals run, they had Al Farouk, they had Mo Harkless, play great defense, hit, hit shots occasionally, where Robert Covington is better than both of those guys, maybe even both of those guys combined. So um, on that wing, he is the perfect guy, small forward, power forward. And I mean, we saw it. If you wanted to run him at small ball center, you could. Um, so shout out to the Portland Trail Blazers for continuously trying to build around Dame and CJ. And with the Houston Rockets, again, this just signals to me that over the next couple of days, we will see those two back-to-back -back big trades. All right. Now, the reason you really clicked on this video has to do with Drew Holiday, I'm guessing. We uploaded a video about a week ago. When it was rumored that the Portland Trailblazers, I'm not the Portland Trailblazers, the, the Pelicans were looking to move from Drew Holiday. You know, basically picking up the phone. They were saying that, oh, he, we're not guaranteeing that we're going to trade him, but y'all can offer stuff to, to us for him. And the trade that they end up getting is actually um, a little bit weird to me. Um, the package at this point, as I'm recording this video, and this is all scheduled to change. Um, oh, oh, I just got an update that said, um, mm. Um, three first round picks were were incorporated. So it has Drew Holiday going to Milwaukee, Bledsoe, George Hill, and significant draft compensation is actually three first round picks. Uh, okay, I th at first I thought it was maybe two. You know what I'm saying? Three first round picks is is a bit. I mean, I bet the Pelicans are looking at this like, hey, if this doesn't go perfectly, Giannis leaves. The Milwaukee Bucks will probably. Oh, my hair looks terrible. The Milwaukee Bucks will probably be a playoff team again, and then those three first round picks are kind of juicy. Billy King, uh, Boston Celtics, like you feel me? Depending on what the protections are on it, so I can understand them maybe making a deal for that. But what's weird to me is. Some of the teams that were also rumored to be in the sweepstakes for Drew Holiday, like the Denver Nuggets, couldn't beat this deal. And maybe the defi deciding factor for for the Pelicans, I th is that Griffin over there? I think, it, I think it's Griffin is in charge of things over there. Maybe the deciding factor were the three first-round picks. That's what I have to assume. Um, because the two players they got back, of course, are quality players, but they don't really help what you do right now. If anything, Eric Bledsoe is a worse fit with Zion than he even was with, with uh, Giannis. So they don't really fit, and I'm guessing that the reason they did this trade was for the three first-round picks in the hopes that maybe Giannis doesn't sign that Supermax contract. But, I mean, it's seeming less likely because the, the 
the Milwaukee Bucks just showed to Giannis that we are willing to spin for you. As far as fit goes, oh my God, it doesn't get much better. Honestly, we had talked about this on the video when we originally talked about Drew Holiday of why he is perfect for Giannis and why I said in the video, I would be mad if I was a Bucks fan and the, the season started and Eric Bledsoe was my starting point guard. I said that. And guess what? He's not just starting point guard anymore. If anything, Drew Holiday is going back to his roots as, as a point guard. And what if he had another all-star season? Because that's the last time we saw him as an all-star when he was the primary ball handler. So we're looking at lineups that can really look uh, good. We're talking about Eric Bledsoe. Um, um, Chris Middleton, Wesley Matthews already opted out. So maybe Dante DiVincenzo slides to that too now. Um, Chris Middleton, Giannis, and then Brooke Lopez. That is a very good starting lineup. Good enough to maybe be the determinant factor for them getting over that hump that they 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 uh, struggle to get over. I mean, one thing Drew Holiday brings over Eric Bledsoe is he is a superior creator. At the end of the day, he's a superior creator. He's a better shooter. I mean, both of them are gr good defenders, but Drew Holiday is elite at that. So we're talking about a team that was already great on the defensive side of the ball. We can expect them to get even better. Now, of course, they gave up um, George Hill, who's one of the best backup point guards in the league last year. But I think that the production between Eric Bledsoe and, and George Hill could be replaced and, and improved. Three first-round picks. That's kind of spicy. Especially spicy when you think about it. The, the more okay, the, the more I'm thinking about this, and this is why I, I love these these things, uh, these videos. Drew Holiday next season has a player option attached to him. I think it's worth like 27 million, and he could be a free agent in 2021. Giving up three first round picks for a player that could potentially walk is should be kind of scary to the Bucks fans. At the end of the day, this raises your ceiling to even more of a championship contender. But it should be in the back of your mind that, yo, if, if Drew Holiday don't really like Milwaukee, we just gave up three first round picks to get him here and he could walk. That would be scary to me. That would be scary to me, especially considering you're probably going to have to pay Dante DiVincenzo something. He ain't Obviously, he's not worth like a max or anything, but you're going to have to send Dante DiVincenzo. Of course, you're going to give Giannis a super max. You can convince him to stay. And, well, if you lose Drew Holiday in free agency, um, I'm not a cap expert, but I don't know if you can really replace that productivity. So that should be something that's in my mind if I'm a, 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 a Bucks fan. But I think for the now, you should be on cloud nine because at the end of the day, you won this trade now, and your team is a team that is trying to win now. I mean, if you guys are raising the trophy, and I think it's in July this year, I don't know. If you guys are raising the trophy, you don't give a damn about those three first-round picks. You know what I'm saying? One trophy is worth literally everything on your team. It just is. And as I'm recording this, more things are breaking. Um, oh, it's pick swaps. Wait. Milwaukee is sending three first-round picks to New Orleans in a deal for Drew Holiday. New Orleans also receives two future draft pick swaps. for The picks are ridiculous. Yes, now I understand, David Griffin. I understand why you completed this trade. The picks are ridiculous. And sure, some of these picks are probably going to end up being late 20s because the Bucks are probably going to be good unless Giannis leaves. But these picks are ridiculous. It comes out besides the three future first round picks going to New Orleans. There are also pick swaps included in the deal. We could look back on this deal and think about how much Griffin finessed. At the end of the day, if Giannis doesn't sign this Supermax, oh my God. Yo, they're all in. They're all in. All th this is this is from Sh um Woj. This is shaping up to be a draft compensation package similar to the New Orleans Pelicans for Anthony Davis with the Lakers. I may have to keep recording for a little bit. We're gonna find two more first round picks thrown into the deal. So three picks and then two additional swaps on top of that. Do you understand what that is? That is an elite package for Drew Holiday. It just is. It just is. And the Bucks, so afraid to lose Giannis, were willing to mortgage their future for it. Wow. Um, hey, hey, this is this is incredible, baby. This is why we love the offseason. For the Pelicans, again, I, I don't know if I talk much about it other than, I mean, the draft picks are amazing. But on paper, I mean, now you have three point guards that are rotational players above average rotational players because of course Lonzo Ball is still on the roster as well. I don't know if this means that a third team will get involved. I don't I don't really know. 
Um, but man, 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 that draft compensation is looking magnificent. And I would be super excited if I'm a Pelicans fan. Hey, you may not be eating right now, but you don't know what those picks can turn into. If anything, that's more assets for y'all if y'all wanted to make another trade to to help now. I, I don't know. I don't know. Wow. Okay, y'all, let me know what you think about this trade. Um, this is a monster one. I, I love this. I love this, and I love y'all. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'm out.